All right, everybody, I want to welcome you to Planet Pool Tour. This is Mac Craw versus Rich Glasscock. I'm Alvin with Inside Pool. Here with Rob Metz in the booth with me. How are you doing today, sir? I'm hanging in there. Didn't Good. play too well myself, but you know that's how uh, things go sometimes. You know, play bad, get bad rolls. You know, you gotta be more consistent to uh, continue to win at this level. These guys, uh, they play, they play well. Most of the people in this tournament can run out if you make mistakes. They make you pay. Definitely. This table's actually a Brunswick table with diamond rails on it. Yes. So. And and also the lives are uh, a little more uh, lively than most places. The tables are very fast, but uh, if you can uh, get your cue ball under control on this type of table where it's very, uh, got to have a nice smooth stroke. And um, some of these tables got real tight double shim pockets on it too, so you got to hit the center. And uh, this will fine tune your stroke. You run out on these tables and uh, make some of the other tables a little bit, uh, little bit easier. Yeah, this one's acting real funny. This table's acting extremely funny. The balls seem to be sliding on this table a little bit. I've practiced on it uh, a couple times uh, at another tournament that was held here uh, a couple of months back that actually um, Macra actually won. He beat uh, Sean Wilkie in the finals. Uh, played very, very well. Uh, won 8-2. to two. I think he made uh, one mistake total in the set. Sean made a few, and he capitalized on all of them. But uh, Matt's a good player, and he's uh, his game's come up. Um, yeah, it's jumped. Yeah, in the last two years, it really has. He plays a lot of the big tournaments, and he's uh, holding his own, and he's getting better. Yep, that's how you have to do it. you got to play the good players. We were just uh, outside talking with Josh Brothers on that, you know. Yeah, he's getting his – it was about his consistency. There would be times where he showed flashes of uh, playing very strong, and then his mm -hmm. game would break down. But uh, his consistency has come up a couple of balls in the past uh, – year and a half or two, and uh, that's where it needs to be to compete against these guys. This Rick Glasscock, I'm not really sure. Uh, I haven't seen uh, him play. Um, I hear he's a pretty decent player, but uh, I guess we're about to find out. Yep. First time I've seen Mr. Glasscock. Looks like um, he didn't spin it enough there, and he hooked himself. He's probably... Uh, best option here is uh, just the one rail and try to hit it full and uh, hope for a good roll here. And he did so. But it uh, looks like he's going to leave uh, leave, uh, leave him out of shot here. A little bit of, little bit of low right spin. He'll get right between the four and the nine with no problem. Oh, got a little careless there. Mm -hmm. I think he's okay, though. Made it a little more difficult. Now he's got to hit more of the center of the pocket here. Okay. Yeah, you got to hit this table real slow. You got to play every shot. Yes. Perfectly. And absolutely. It's and, a fast table. And on certain shots where you got to go from one side of the table to the other, you got to put a little bit of extra English on it. So, because it's going to slide a little bit. So if you put the normal on it, it, when it slides, it's going to take you off your path. But if you put a little extra on it, it's going to put you where you need to be. But it's tough to adjust when that happens, when you're not used to having to hit balls a certain way and you know how your stroke is. Yeah, you definitely got to change things up for this table. Table rolls very well. It's nice and level. Rails aren't as lively as some, but it uh, just slides a little bit. It is a, it is brand new felt. Uh, it was actually done, I believe, about two months ago before the last tournament was held here, about two days before that. It's holding up and, real uh, nice. And it's got the least of uh, amount of play, you know, out of the mm -hmm. tables in the hall. So the, the felt really is just starting to break in. It used to slide more, but now it's starting to uh, settle in a little bit. Still a little quirky, but it's getting there. Hmm. Watch it. No, I got bumped out. We might do a ring game tonight. That'd be nice. Like a 10-ball ring game. That's a good game. 10 balls a very good game. Yeah, that's the game. They can't manipulate the racks, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, just uh, it's a lot harder to make a break, a ball and a break, and uh, just, you know, that extra ball, too, adds an extra ball to have to get on. Yep. I predict, uh, be honest with you, within the next um, five years maybe, that uh, it's going to go to uh, 15 ball. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of people um, 
don't uh, realize that uh, the reason why the Philippine players play nine ball and ten ball so well is because their whole lives over there they play nothing but 15 ball rotation. And when you only got to run nine balls, that's three quarters of a, you know, a little less yep. than, a little more than a half of a rack, should I say, in, in the 15 ball rotation. And you know how many times they've probably yep. ran to the nine and 15 ball rotation to where it would be game over in nine ball? Sure, I've been over there. All they had to do was learn how to break the balls in nine ball, and then it was all over with. There's pool tables on the street when you drive by on blocks, kids playing pool on. Yep. The equipment it's everywhere, and they play on. Uh, oh, the Charlie's terrible. Poor equipment, oh, poor conditions, and they make the ball move. And then they come here and uh, mm -hmm. play on ours, and it's like playing on uh, platinum tables with diamond studs around them. Yep. It's like heaven to them. Yeah. It looks like uh, Mac got a little bit straight. He's probably going to go rail first and try to spin the ball. Oh, mm -hmm. clip the four. Starting to bump balls. That's not good. Looks like he's struggling a little bit. The first. Uh, First couple of games, Matt's up one to nothing. Sorry, uh, we don't have that up there yet, but Matt is up Take one to nothing. That. He may have left uh, Rick a little window through here to maybe spin through. I would, uh, depending on how it is, yes, uh, it looks like he's got room. He might be able to make this ball just spin a little, little drag shot past the four with a little control and when he hits it it's going to squirt out and he can play the four and the uh, side off the five or maybe if he gets better position just play it right in but sounds like a good shot he's got to worry about the three first because it's uh nothing like this is easy when you got to spin the ball and curve it a little bit Getting out the old jump cue. I don't like this shot here. No, that's way too far. I uh, I believe he's got a enough lane through there. Yeah, he's he got to just drag past the four. He does have enough room. I can I can see what he's thinking though. He doesn't want to play the drag shot and finesse and hit it and then just hang it sell right out. in the hole and sell out. If he at least does jump it, then uh, he could get a roll. But if if you're gonna do this jump shot, I you know, and it's got to be hit perfect. I, I I might neglect to kick this ball and kick it back behind the four mm -hmm. and the five. Yeah, I don't I don't jump here either. It's too far. But see what he does. Oh, he almost come up with it. Oh, unfortunately, he moved the seven and made it a little mm -hmm. bit easier to run out. But uh, I don't think he's got a pocket for this. It looks like it's kind of just a little safe, a little stop behind a seven, bank the three back uh, to the other side of the table. Shouldn't be any problems here. It's looking good. Perfect shot. Mm-hmm. Locked him up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he locked him up pretty good. Uh, there's not much space between the ball. He's probably going to neglect to come off the... Uh, the back rail jacked up over the seven. Probably have to use a bridge here, maybe. Or maybe even... Yeah, the uh, bridge is a good idea. Yeah, maybe even uh, he might kick two rails um, past the nine. Uh, cue ball just past the nine. Spin it a little little bit, but you got to hit it it's firm. Shot. Where, and it's going to come off about where the chalk is. And if he hits it firm enough... I'm not really sure what he's doing here. Three rails. Yep. One, two, three. Nice Click. hit. Beautiful hit there. It's a good way. Very good way nice hit. I'm sure a three cushion player would have probably seen that one right off the bat. Mm hmm. But uh, some of us rotation players uh, don't see them as many multiple rail kicks that are easier than the one or two railer. Matt made a pretty nice shot there. Nine ball helped a little bit, but it was pretty under control. Looks like there's no problems from here. Matt's uh, been playing very well the last uh, month or two. Very consistent, and uh, he should have no problems. He should be out here. Well, he's definitely into pool, and that's good. I mean, he's in. He's got his heart into it, so 
yeah. that's where you need to be to play at a top level. Absolutely. I mean, you really I mean, got to be into uh, it. He's played more Mez tournaments than anybody you probably know. Plays all the, uh, just about enough of the uh, of the the top tier tournaments, the U.S. Open. Yeah, uh, he plays in the big tournaments. U.S. Open 10 ball out in Vegas. Uh, he won a couple of matches and lost a couple. He, he held his own, but it's a very, very, very tough field of uh, Yeah, I mean, you're playing the monsters. 96. Yeah, it's the top tier players. Mm -hmm. And uh, he holds his own out there, and he's getting better. But he plays all the tournaments, and he plays the better players all the time. And if you want your game to increase at the rate it's supposed to with the talent level that, that you possess within you, uh, it makes it all the all the better. He got a little careless wow. on that, it looked like. He's got a bank. Yeah, it looks Yeah, the looks bank is the best shot steep. here because at least he could maybe uh, – Bring the cue ball back to the back rail a little bit, and if he misses, he can leave it a little tough. Yeah, he could. He could leave his, it in the center of the ball. table. It's a two-way shot. Yeah, I don't oh, like tried, going that way. I didn't way. like that shot. Yeah, I don't either. It's but, too um, much. He must have felt confident. He might have been able to see an angle a little bit that we couldn't see from mm -hmm. uh, here. But, he jumped uh, up, too. He did. Okay, it's one Easy one. does it. Yeah. Just like that's that. That's the end game. You could run six, seven, eight balls and hang the main ball, and that's the one that I mean, counts. that's the one. Yeah, I would have played a two-way shot there. Yes. That was probably one of the better uh, uh, choices in that mm -hmm. situation. Atlanta Pool Tour sponsors, Mike Riccadella, Remax Pros, Coins of the Realm, George Hammerbacher, Capone Custom Cues, Jab Productions, Amez Tour, Gambling Clothing Company, Kamui Tips, and Hard Luck Sportswear. There you go, bada bing. Yeah, I was going to make sure that one got in there, the uh, Hard Luck Sportswear. Um, of course. New clothing sports line uh, for poker players and pool players. Um they had their uh, shop set up in Vegas this year in uh, May for the uh, BCA Nationals and the 10-ball uh, tournament out there for their first time. They got a lot of nice product, hats, tank tops, uh, shirts and cover-ups, jackets, um, men and women. They're very nice uh, clothing line, hats, uh, bracelets. Uh, they're, they're an up-and-coming clothing line. I think that they're... Uh, they're gonna they're gonna progress very well. It's just gonna take a couple of years to get out there, like anything else. They need more exposure, and it's uh, just the beginning. Well, they've been promoting the streams for us, and we've been promoting them. So hopefully, you guys will go out there and support the sponsors. Nice, nice. And uh, they got uh, their first two player reps um, for the uh, for the clothing line is uh, Sean Get Some Wilkie and uh, Sean Alaska. Yep, they just played. Morgan. And they uh, actually just played on the uh, live stream table a little mm -hmm. bit earlier. And uh, Sean uh, played, uh, caught a gear uh, towards the middle end of the set and uh, pulled away a little bit after a couple of mistakes that um, Sean Morgan did. But uh, that's the first two player reps for the Hard Lux uh, sports clothing line. If it hits the six and rolls right, he might be able to no nah, come out a little too far. Shouldn't have much of a problem. Just got to stay focused and pocket the uh, two ball and come back out to the middle of the table. A little bit of high left uh, English to kill it and straighten it back out. Oh, he neglected to try to spin it and come two rails. Interesting. He was fortunate to uh, get a, like I like to say, a little Duncan Hines roll there. <laughs> the jelly roll, huh? The jelly roll, yeah. <laughs> Swiss Miss. All Duncan them. Hines Duncan roll. Duncan Hines. Nice. Ouch. Ouch. 
tough shot. Yeah. Anytime you're on the rail, uh, any pool player, if they tell you they feel 100% comfortable when they're on the rail, they're they're not really telling the, uh, <laughs> should I say, he's telling the truth. Uh, truth of the matter is nobody wants to be on the back or side rails frozen to the rail and have to shoot the length of the table at any ball. No, definitely not. Let's take a look at this. Looks like he can force it in there. Ooh, I'm not so sure about that hit. Um, I might have called a ref myself to come over there and check that one out. That was very, very close. Yeah. I think he's going to let him have it. I like to sit back and uh, see that one in uh, instant replay in slow motion yep. uh, later on. We're working on it. <laughs> we'll get there. Oh. Well, Matt's probably surprised he's getting back to the table. And speaking of uh, being uncomfortable as from the rail, uh, using the bridge, too, can be uh, a little difficult if you're not used to using it. Your stroke is definitely not as strong as when you're using your mm -hmm. hands as with the bridge. There are some very good bridge players out there that use the bridge. Yep. But uh, you can't do as... Uh, as much you don't feel as comfortable neither. Got to have your hands on the table to feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Oh, Whew. Both both players seem to be struggling a little bit yeah, right now. Maybe they're a little the tight. A little tight. Sometimes uh, being on the live stream uh, could add a little extra pressure on some players. Uh, I don't think that that's really the case here. Matt has uh, played live stream many, many times. Uh, yeah, he has. Big tournaments, top players. The, this is no, no, no type of pressure uh, for him. It's just uh, he's just struggling a little bit with his shots and in, uh, in his position, at the table. It's a little quirky. Looks like uh, unless something happens here, Mr. Glasscock should be up to the one. Is. This is a winner's break format, race to nine. You know, a good friend of mine, I I was hoping to get him to come here for the tournament, Rob Saez. Good friend of mine, too. Yes, uh, if you're out there watching, Rob, how you doing? But uh, he was at the Seminole uh, event in Florida and played that, and he's yep. uh, overseas in Nicaragua right now. And, uh, you know, good luck to you. Shoot well, my friend. Definitely, Rob. We'll see each other in room up, I'm sure, at uh, either Derby or the U.S. Open or both. Definitely Vegas next year, just like this past year. We had a blast. Rob knows how to have fun, that's for sure. And very strong uh, player. He can hit a very high gear. <laughs> He's gear. really good. He just barely lost to Ralph in the finals at the Super Billiards. Yeah. I did the stream of that one, and, too. And, you know, uh, they both particularly uh, didn't play v as well as they could. They both made a few mistakes that were uncanny. But you know what? In that type of tournament, with that type of uh, prestige online, and they're playing for a decent amount of money, uh, then the pressure can uh, start to uh, build up a little bit, even on the best of the players. Sure. One of the best players under pressure for the money I've ever seen, and I believe in my time uh, the best money player I've ever seen is Efren Reyes, the mm -hmm. magician. He didn't get that name uh, for no reason. I've seen him down in sets where players that were very strong needed one or two games, and he'd need five to six, seven games. Yep, and, uh, I've seen Earl do the same he'd thing. He'd come back and win when the guy's on the hill run flat out from there in a winter break format. Yeah, I've seen Efren do some amazing things myself over the years. Best money player I've seen in my time, and uh, a lot of people think uh, best money player of all time. He's uh, got to be right up there, if anything. Sure. Matt hit that ball uh, pretty nice. He nice hit it and real smooth. nice. Mm -hmm. Got the shape he wanted. Should have no trouble. He sure did. One, two, three. He's got a little poke stroke. Yeah, it looks like he's uh, starting to uh, figure 
figure things out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's uh, starting to get a little comfortable. He got on the wrong side of the eight here, though. He's going to have to come back down uh, around the table here. Oh, he neglected to uh, go two rails instead of spinning to three, which was a very nice shot. Put him right on the angle he needed to be. Perfect speed. Good shot. Got a little bit of an angle, not straight in, which you don't want to be all the time. And Always like to have an two. angle. Two, yep, two. We've got to have an angle. We've got a match here, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully both players can uh, kick it into another gear here and uh, keep putting the heat back and forth on each other and uh, make it a nice match for the viewers as well. It's funny. I've seen some real high-level pull where the players bring in the cue ball back to the center of the table after he makes the nine ball. Like Not only is he bringing the cue ball through the whole rack to the center of the table, but even after the nine ball. <laughs> Still just programmed to bring the cue ball back to the middle of the table. Absolutely. It's pretty but nice when you see them when well, you see them landing on a dot. When they'll have a or when they'll have a nine ball where it's a little bit of an angle and they'll uh, they'll cut it in the corner and spin it two rails and leave the cue ball down on the back end of the table yeah, just, where in the case, breaks. just in case they happen to wobble the ball and hang it. Uh -huh. You know, so they leave some distance no matter what. Right, right. It's like you said, it's already programmed to, it's everything, you know, they, they focus on making the ball, but they make sure the cue ball is where it needs to be if mm -hmm. uh, if they make a mistake a lot of the times. And, you know, and a lot of people think that uh, when somebody does make a mistake and the cue ball is at the back end of the table that they got a lucky roll. But you know what? A lot of times uh, they're playing it that way yep. for that reason. Oh, he just fouled that cue ball, I believe, right? I guess so. I didn't see what happened? Did he bump it? Yeah, he took like uh, like hmm. a half a stroke and then went to go forward and come back again, and he nudged the cue ball about a half an inch. Oh, uh, I see. <clears throat> this might be the uh, the little opening for Matt to maybe be a little it. separation here. Don't want to get ahead of the head of the game uh, too fast, but uh, look at this roll. <laughs> I like that. Nice touch. Got a little mm -hmm. little bit of a roll. But uh, he played it pretty pretty good as well. Played it good, yeah. Mm -hmm. It went where he wanted it to. Had to jam it up out of there. When you do good things, it seems like good things happen. That's when it. When you do bad things, the bad rolls and everything seem Got to that. follow. Got that right. Just the pool gods. Pool gods, man. They're brutal. Yep. They're on my side, though. Wondering how many uh, viewers do we have out there right now? We do have another match going on on table 12 down there with uh, Kevin West and uh, Ryan McCreese. I'm trying to uh, see if I can get a, a, a score count on the uh, match. And uh, we'll get that update. I should be able to get a score match on the uh, Kevin West uh, Ryan McCreese match in about maybe two minutes. And uh, they've been playing for a while. That's a good matchup. We were kind uh, kind of hoping that we could get that one on a stream, but uh, the time the match started compared to the time uh, sure we had the stream match, it di it didn't it didn't gel up right. We know we had a lot of requests for that out there. We do apologize. Yep. We, we wanted that match as well. Well, Matt took care of business there. Oh, it's three to two, and uh, he seems like he's starting to uh, to loosen up a little bit. Yeah, he's getting the roll of the table now. He's a little smoother than he was the first game or two, and he's taking his time a little bit more. He's it's a taking, poke stroke. Yeah, he's not uh, rushing uh, his, his shots. Um, I believe uh, the match is over between Ryan McCreese and uh, Kevin West. I was just told uh, Ryan McCreese, um, I believe, won 9-4. to four. For the viewers uh, watching and uh, listening out there. Ryan McCreese is a very strong player. Um, he has taken some time off from pole uh, in the past year or so. Um, he's played very sparingly. He's won... Um, He's won two tournaments that I know of, though, out of, like, the five that he has played in the last year or so. But uh, he has a baby now, and uh, he's working. And, uh, 
you know, it's it's uh, it's a tough schedule sometimes to play all these events and work and take care of a family. It's not easy. For those that don't know, don't try that at home. But yeah, Ryan's a very uh, very strong player. Both of them play sure very is. well. Kevin's a very consistent player. Ryan is uh, beating Keith McCready on ESPN. Uh, he's 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 had some some big uh, notches put on his belt. He's beat some good players, that's for sure. Yes, over the years. he's a he's a very strong player. Can hit a uh, a very high gear. Yeah, he can. It looks like uh, Rick has left himself in the back of the pocket a little bit here. This is no gimme shot. You have to stay down on this ball and stroke straight through it because the three is right there, so you don't have to worry about really getting any kind of shape. You just got to stay down and uh, focus on making the ball. Hit the ball a little firm. It's a good shot to make the ball. I'm not sure if he can go through there. He can pass I, I, by that uh, seven. I don't think he can. Let's take a look at the other side. He may be going for the combination here, but uh, mm -hmm. I might uh, play a safe shot. Oh, he tried to bank in and make the nine. Yep. See what kind of roll he got. He uh, got a it good panned roll. out pretty good for him, I'd say. Fortune <laughs> favors the bold. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's just part of the game, though. Every player hopes to get a few of those at times. He's probably just going to spin the ball and go behind the, uh, looks like the 80 tried is. to go behind. Very good nice save, shot. Good save. Very nice, Matt. Very nice. Real nicely played shot there. Perfect speed, under control. He shouldn't have much of a problem hitting this three with a jump shot. But uh, we're going to have to see how the ball roll after he makes a good, good contact here. Shouldn't be much of a problem at all. Once again, we're at uh, Top Hat Billiards in, uh, in Parkville, Maryland. Um, it's a very nice pool hall, nice equipment. Uh, nice room. Nice people, nice room, nice owner. Uh, Fatlow, thank you for allowing the tournament to be held here at, this, the, uh, at the pool hall. We appreciate that. Um, for those that uh, live in the area and uh, like watching pool, see pool on TV, they like what they see, you know, come on over. Uh, Tomorrow the tournament will still be here. The women's division is on Sunday tomorrow. Yep. yep. Uh, last time we had the uh, Planet Pool here, Karen Core and Jolie Kelly. I think they were talking about that earlier. We're here. Mm -hmm. Jolie Kelly won the women's, of course. Karen Core uh, played very well in both of them, but had to, uh, I believe, forfeit a match, right? Yep. And uh, my buddy uh, and uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Marvin over here, uh, Rob Saez, uh, won the tournament. Played very, very well. He hit a very exceptional gear, and it, uh, not many of the players had much to offer at all, although in the finals, Kevin West did uh, have to double dip him. Kevin finished second. He um, six to six in that match, I believe, and then he made a mistake on the four ball, and uh, Rob never looked back and won nine six and wrapped up the title. Matt seems to be Matt seems to be getting into a nice little uh, comfortable gear here. A little bit of right-hand English come back across the table. Nice and smooth. Matt's a, Matt's a pretty smart player, too. He doesn't take too many chances. Oh, he almost bobbled that ball. Well... Uh, of course, that's not what he wanted, but uh, he still should be able to uh, maybe kill this ball two rails and get a decent enough shot. And he did so. It was a nice little touch. And it's 4-2 uh, Matt, uh, Matt Craw against Rick Glasscock. Um, Matt's definitely getting comfortable, and I think Rick's probably getting cold. He's been in the yeah, chair for a couple of, uh, couple of games now. That's going to happen. Looks like he's going to take a break. He, he knows it. He needs to take a little break, which is smart from time to time. Every player knows when he needs to step away from the table. It's just a matter of the player knowing if he's able to step away and not continue to play. Some know they need to 
to get away from the table for a minute, but they neglect to just continue to play through, and that's not good sometimes. You need to, you know, whatever it is, you know, if you're a smoker, which I don't recommend, but uh, if you do smoke a cigarette, you know, take your break, whatever it is, get your head together and come back and try to start fresh. One game at a time. It's a long race to nine. You've got a lot of, lot of set left here. Definitely so. We have a pretty, uh, pretty decently strong field here too. Uh, there's some very good players here. Sure is. We have some uh, top 25 players here, and uh, I don't think there's anybody in the tournament that uh, can't hold a cue. Everybody, everybody can play a little bit in this tournament. Yeah, I've seen some good players I've never seen before. I was really surprised with the way they were shooting. Well, it's always good to meet new players, meet new people, uh, watch how they do uh, certain things, and you can always learn sometimes, even from a player that might not be a top-tier player, but something he does very well and he doesn't even realize it himself. When a top player watches him play, he might be able to even pick up a habit from him that's, that, that he can learn. You always can learn in this game. Even when you lose, you learn. That's, definitely, that's the attitude, man. That's that's definitely the attitude. This is an unbelievable game. It's a uh, it's a passion for for us pool players. It's a it's a feeling we get when we're in the atmosphere. But at the same time, when you play at a high level and uh, you have high expectations for yourself, and when you sometimes don't uh, don't play up to your expectations, it can be very frustrating. But that's uh, part of the, part of the game. Mental game is strong. It has to be strong in this. It's everything. Probably a little safe shot. One rail to the back of the table. The players can all make the shots. It's the mental game because they miss a straight in ball a foot from the hole just because I, of the mind. I've seen good players be up five, six to one, nothing going to nine, miss one ball that they should never miss and mentally be out of it and lose the set. Yep. Fall apart and can't run out from there on out the rest of the set. It's a touchy little game, that's for sure. And i got to be quite honest, uh, I kind of used to be one of them players. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I've learned from experience. I was young and had a little temper and got frustrated and caused you to play uh, worse. So it's no good for your game. But if you can control that and, gotta control it. and stay it. focused, uh, things work out a lot better, it seems. That's a nice shot there. Yeah, it was a good shot. He hit that ball perfect. He's uh, probably going to be able to spin off the rail here, though, and make it. And uh, now he's going to – actually, he's going to try to kick and play safe again behind the seven. It looked like that ball might have went if he had just come off the uh, side rail maybe. And it was going to head over for the two, so the position, he'd had some type of decent shot on the two. Maybe not. He's the got angle quite a have, tough shot here. Yeah, this is a this is a safe shot here. You bank the one ball out to the sure. middle of the table and just draw, draw the cue ball a little bit behind the seven. Not much, not much to do here. Beauty. He hit it. I like it. And the four ball actually uh, helped to make it a little tougher by kicking it more over. Sure. I, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, see, I I jumped this ball. I jumped the seven and I sure. hit the one. It's a nice this. kick. Great shot. You know, the the two hard kick shots, you know, he's kicked very well. He's hit the balls clean in the face. Yep. So evidently he knows a little bit about the multiple rail kicking because uh, he's gotten there every time so far. It's about planning it out, man. Oh, look at that. Wow, what a nice Whoa. shot. Oh, wow. I thought he was going to clip off that too. Yes. That was a very nice shot there. I do agree. Drew it, drew it back to the point, off the eight a little bit, and hugged it at the edge of the pocket. That was a nice touch shot. Mm -hmm. Anytime uh, when you got a little touchy shot like that on these fast tables, if you can keep the cue ball from moving more than an inch or so, you've done pretty well. 
because these tables are very, very, uh, very quick. Quicker than most tables that most people have played on. Got that right. Locking up the nine. Well, tried to. Tried to. Uh, it is a three foul format, also. Um, good players. Uh, they they try to run out from here, but uh, they've also been known to uh, try to three foul here as well when the balls are clumped together and they got mm -hmm. balls to help them out to get the three foul. But he's he's going to neglect the run out, which is the right uh, right option here. That's the gentlemanly thing to do. Tell that to the Philippines when there's 20,000 in the light. <laughs> that ain't happening. No matter, no matter what option that they went with, the three foul or the run out, they were more likely to get there on either way anyway. Yep. Because when they lock you on balls, they freeze you on the balls. When a good player locks you behind a the ball, there's a little bit of space that gives you room to move. The Philippines normally put you right on the ball where you don't have an option most of the time at all. It's you're almost dead in the water to right. knock you down so good. They're the best all around players in the world, that's no secret. For yep. the for the money especially. It's like I have witnessed it. He's gonna look like maybe behind the seven wow. or in the hole. Oh. Dropped her right in the hole. Gonna give Matt that uh that bump game. Yep, again Matt's going to have uh, a little more than halfway here. If he just takes care of business, there should be no trouble at all. What do you think? Dead on the money right there, man. Truly are. All he's got to do is get nice on the six, which he will. He knows the speed of the cloth now. It rolls over. You yeah. gotta just touch that ball. That ball will roll 20 feet. Matt has stepped up a, a couple of balls in speed these last couple of games. Yeah, he's yeah, feeling he's more, mm -hmm. more comfortable, hitting balls more cleaner. Absolutely. Not much work left here. Balls are by the hole. Connect the dots. From A to B is all it is from here. <laughs> Perfect speed. A little bit of an angle, once again, like you want. Never straight in on length of the table shots. All pool players uh, don't like that either. Rather have a slight angle. Nice. Bing. Yep. Five two. It looks like Rick. Uh, Rick needs to hope that um, Matt uh, makes a mistake here and uh, he can get back into it because so far now at this pace, um, Matt looks very confident and comfortable. And Rick hasn't been to the table much in the last uh, four games. No, and he's making mistakes when he gets there. So Matt's got him right where he wants him. Yeah, Matt's, Matt's got the upper hand on this match right now. Sure does. And normally when Matt has a nice lead like this, uh, he normally uh, can step it up a little bit more again and, and, and keep, the, the keep the fire burning in the kitchen. Keep the pressure on. He actually got a quarter ball to jam in there, which is good. We'll see how he sets up on the one. Now the nine went on the, went on a break for you viewers, and uh, for the format, the nine does not uh, win the game unless it goes into the back two break end pockets uh, in this format, which, um, to be quite honest, I, I don't like that. Um, yeah, I don't I'd like rather it if you break the nine in and it goes, you know, that's a good break like by you too. by hitting the one square and, you Should know. be rewarded for that. Sure, sure. It's just you can't plan that. You can't plan the nine to go. Nobody. I mean, you, there's a break where you kick it towards the pocket, but the chances of it going are two yes. out of ten. Exactly. Maybe not even that much. Right. You might go 30 racks without breaking the nine and break it in three times in a row. I mean, yeah, exactly. But you know, it's you know that's not that's just not going to happen too often. So when it does happen, you should be rewarded for that. 
they're playing the uh, Seminole Tour where it doesn't count either. Ten ball doesn't count on the break, which is weird because <laughs> you would think that's way more difficult. To Rick's going to jump and uh, jump back. Made a good hit. Let's see uh, if he gets a roll out of it. Beep. Nope. Um, and Matt has the angle on the one to get back down on a two yep. here. So, uh, Rick, it's, really a Rick it's not looking too uh, promising for Rick. That's a reflection of the mental game right there. When things start rolling like that, and you know the guy's, the player's mind is doing bad things. Well, Matt uh, got a little straighter than he'd like. He's not exactly straight in. He has a slight angle, but he's going to have to, he's going to have to juice this ball a little bit to uh, get back get back out to the center of the table I would uh, I would probably follow this ball and spin it two rails up out of side pocket which is what he did he didn't really hit it as aggressive as he did some of the other shots because that ball could be a ball that's uh, could be jarred very easily he just wanted to cinch the ball and take what the table gave him for the most part there oh jammed it. He popped up on his shot, too. Sure did. That was a mechanics error there. Sure he, was. It's something we all try not to do, pull up out of our shot, but uh, that was that was a pretty, a uh, pretty, thing. Uh, pretty obvious. He pulled up pretty, pretty good on that one. The mind does that. It really does. Now, that might be the break that uh, Mr. Uh, Glasscock needs to uh, get back in this match a little bit without having too much more distance put between him and Matt. He didn't hit that ball too bad. He's got a decent decent shot. He'd have liked to have been a little bit better. But uh, I'd like to say, uh, like I said, I haven't seen him play too, uh, too often. He should be okay from here. Just got to concentrate on yeah, make the five. The nine's going to help him. I don't like hitting this ball with English here. But. Now, see, that shot there... Um, him coming back around three rails, I, I would have probably neglected just to go into the nine and bump the nine and stop it for the six. But uh, some sometimes different players, you know, they play shots different ways according to how comfortable they feel. This might be a safe shot here back behind the nine after banking the ball. Absolutely. And... Uh, that's close to hooking him. I think he may have a little little bit of a shot here. He might be able to just get around the edge of the nine. It's close. You can tell Matt's not too sure about it. He doesn't like it a whole lot. Anytime we have to look at it four or five times or more, then it's... Something's not right normally. Yeah, he goes at those long shots, and I think it's a sellout on it against a better player. I was getting, I was getting ready to say normally he doesn't uh, take too many chances, as I said earlier, it's and that chancy. that surprised me. He tried to back cut that. He did ball. another one, a couple shots like that. And uh, normally he's not that way. He's normally pretty conservative. He plays with the table, gives him, doesn't try to get too wild especially in the bigger tournaments because he knows them types of mistakes one or two and that that's the whole set most of the time. Oh. Yeah, I like looking at that ball a little bit more. I can understand why Rick missed that ball. Uh, he hasn't been to the table much, and he's just not feeling comfortable. Whatever he's doing, it's not working out, and he just can't get some type of, some type of groove going. I don't, I don't know if uh, that that was that great of a shot. Um, personally, I bank this ball, stick it, bank the six, two rails, and bring it back on the other side of the eight, just like that. But see, I would have stuck the cue ball. Good he, shot, though. I mean, it ended, it, it worked out for him. I mean, uh, yeah. But I think he could have just uh, just stopped the cue ball right there and stayed behind the eight. That was a nice shot. It worked out for him. Probably going to see another safe here. The cue ball spun two rails behind the nine. Six ball banked down by the eight. Nope. Uh, he's left him a shot. Actually, this game should be over here. Yeah, if he's got a shot, then it's over. It looks like he's got just a little angle to float right towards the eight.
Oh, he's jumping. I didn't realize. I thought he could see it. I guess yeah, he's I thought. Uh, I guess he's oh, got a flake. I thought he was uh, perfect, actually. Uh oh. Look at this. Okay, well, Matt's going to enter a shooting gallery here. Rick Rick really needed to uh, to to win this game here. 6-2 uh, is a big difference to 5-3. Stay down on the shot. Wasn't much to it, but the simple shots are the ones that uh, seem to be missed a little more often than the tough ones sometimes. That's it. You got that right. They get more relaxed when it's they miss. Well, it's 6-2 Matt Craw over Rick Glasscock. Rick had a couple opportunities that last game to uh, to get there, and he just uh, he's struggling right now. Hopefully he can uh, catch a little bit of a gear and make this a little tighter match and get himself back into it. We want to see everybody do well out here. Yeah, we do. But unfortunately, there's only so many payout spots and only so many people can play well and and so many people are going to play bad. That's how it is every tournament. Nothing can be done about that. It's how the chips fall is how they're going to fall. Matt's changed his break a little bit in the past uh, couple years. He used to get real close to the ball and not have much uh, much cue hanging out from his bridge hand, maybe six to six to eight inches tops, and he'd get real close to the ball. He's learned to uh, back up off the ball a little bit. It's allowed him to uh, break the balls a little firmer. His break was very unorthodox, I, I thought, and he changed it up. Changed it, huh? Yes, he did. I missed that. I was doing some technical stuff there. Always on top of it, ain't you? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I get, I get distracted. Man never stops getting, working. I'm famous for getting distracted, man. I lose what score it is. That's why we got them scorecards, because I, I just can't keep track of the score. Looking at oh. four computers. Thinned off the two a little bit, but uh, seven's going to help That's him That's why here. we got you here, Rob Metz, my new friend. <laughs> Glad that you got me here. Yep. It's nice I get to go around, meet new people, and uh, that's one of the better parts of the job. I get to enjoy uh, hanging out in different people's territory and had some pretty amazing times, I'll tell you. Pool was an amazing game. Yep. i like to uh, actually uh, give a, a shout-out uh, real quick go to a it. friend of mine, uh, Blair Thine. Hey, Blair. What's up, man? Um, you know, Pool Poker and Pain. Uh, pokerandpain.com. Yeah, he's uh, trying to uh, get it get it going on the, on uh, in the works. It's uh, about to break through. He's getting very close. He's been working on it sure for has. a few years. Um, it's I talked very, to him a couple days ago. Very intriguing. Uh, I think it's going to help the game of pool, uh, poker as well, and uh, it's actually uh, MMA fighting in there too involved. So it's a very interesting trio of uh, things that's going on with his plans. And uh, things were going to work out. He'll he'll get his break. It's just a matter of time. He works very hard at it. He spends a lot of time at it. Yeah, he does. We we spent uh, 15 days in Vegas, and when me and Rob left, uh, he was there for another three weeks. He didn't leave. That's uh, funny. You hang out with Blair and Rob. Mm -hmm. Those are guys I hang out with. <laughs> Just never at the same time. <laughs> oh, there'll be a tournament where we're all together. Yeah. Derby City, something. I've seen open, you around. Open, somewhere. I've seen you around over the years. I got to hang out with uh, Blair and Doug Stanley and Vadi Nazat. Good people, good people. Had a real nice time in Derby City. Rob, uh, Rob had a little hard time out there in the uh, 10 ball, U.S. Open 10 ball. He, uh, he did. He struggled a little bit against uh, Danny Harriman. I uh, was up seven. Danny's a monster, man. Up seven four, lost eight seven. Made a couple of mistakes, let him get back in it. And, uh, Ralph Salkey. Uh, Danny's got the experience. He really does. He seems to got the little notch on Rob right now. He's beaten Rob the last couple of times that they've played. Danny's a real hard player. I played him. He's he's da brutal, man. Danny. Uh, He'll just chew you up. Danny is probably uh, one strong. of the top five or six, uh, I'd say, in the country and all around. 
playing yeah, everything. Amazing. He just doesn't do it anymore. He plays straight pool very well, one pocket, uh, rotation. He plays yeah. all the games good. I saw him at uh, Derby City, I think, this year. Didn't get to talk to him much, but had our times. Danny's great. I don't know why he's not playing more. I think he has a job. <laughs> Had to do it sometimes. Yep. Welcome to the real world, even right? I, even I work. I do other work than just this. I'm actually a professional Audi mechanic. Oh, okay. <laughs> when I'm not doing this. What happened? Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. I got one of my friends heckling me in the background about, a Vegas, about one of the Vegas trips we had. Nice guy. <laughs> hmm. And while we're digressing, Rich, Rick Glasscock is running out. I have to come up with a nickname for him. Who's that? <laughs> Rick. <laughs> Think of what kind of a nickname chat guys can come up with out there. <laughs> All right, so we're at uh, six to three. Bada bing. Six to three. is do the sales girl. She is the sales girl, my friend. She's working it, that's for sure. Jeez. She got you, man. Megan's brutal. She's brutal, isn't she? Yeah, Miss uh, Megan Fort just unplugged me here and uh, talked me into buying some uh, some raffle tickets. Didn't have change at first and uh, said that was all the more reason just to spend the whole 20. She's a good salesman. Saleswoman, should I say. We'll get more tonight. It's all about the YouTube videos later. And you guys can see all our YouTube videos at Inside Pool Mag. Go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. You'll see all these videos come up here in about the next week. All the Seminole Tour videos. Everything, my friends. And you will be laughing out loud with me. Mr. Metz. I'm sure they really miss you, Megan. With hugs and kisses, X's and O's. Yep, he's doing a good job. I do what I can do sometimes. Doing a good job. Look at that lockup. Well, that is six Alcatraz. to three, and uh, Rick's got to make something happen here. I would probably just uh, neglect to kick the one rail and uh, try to make the ball here. It's tough to kick this ball and leave it safe. It sure is. It's going to go towards the pocket. So you, s you still have to kick it a little firm, though. You don't want to baby it. And he kicked it oh. firm. That was a. Uh, it's going to sell that out. That was good. Good solid hit. This is no, uh, this is no gimme here. That's a, this is a tough shot on this table too. This this table's M making the ball is not the, shot. the hardest part, but uh, controlling the uh, whitey and uh, getting the shot on the uh, eight, and he got a nice good. roll. Good, he there. got a good roll. Yep, he got the jelly. He got the Duncan Hines again, mm -hmm. didn't he? 
Seven three, Matt Crow over Rick Glasscock. Seven to three. And uh, we don't mind having uh, requests sent in to uh, for matches that want to be seen. We do as best we can. It's to, all up uh, to Jose. He's choosing everything. Yeah, Jose's the uh, the captain of the ship. He makes the final yay or nay on that situation. But uh, sometimes uh, we can maybe persuade him a little bit and pull a few strings, maybe get him a, a chicken salad sandwich or something. And, yeah, uh, you, you just know, get him food. You get him food and you can bribe him. He's pretty, yeah, he's he's pretty easy to oriented. win over with the food. Yeah. He's a very simple <laughs> mind. He's got food oriented. Oh, he squatted a cue ball nice and then got kicked to the back of the table. We broke the balls pretty pretty firm. He's like Homer Simpson. Um, he's probably going to play safe here. Back behind the nine and the two. That's the move. Yeah, you don't want to play this ball in the side pocket and spin it with right no. English and try to get in that little, no, that little no. crease for the two. And then you got to still get on the three and come back and forth. So, yeah, you got to play safe here. And looks like that's what he's going to do. Oh, he did shoot it in the side. The, in the seat, but look, now he's hooked behind the nine, it looks like. Ah, uh, that was too tough of a position shot from there with a half of a pocket or, or a little more than a half a pocket you're shooting at in the side to be able to put the correct English on it to get where you need to be without missing the ball and throwing it out of the hole. Might be able to see the edge. He's gonna. Yep, we can see half the ball actually. Good shot. I believe this is a have-to-have game here for Rick. Rick must not lose this game. It allows oh, Matt to get him. on the hill, and he needs the last five. He has to win this game. This is a can't-lose game for sure. He's got to play perfect which, every shot. Which he's he, almost uh, going too far. Which can add a little bit of extra pressure. Oh, yeah. Especially as fast as this table's playing. I mean, you just saw it right there. He almost went over. And for those that are wondering how I did in the tournament, not too well. I uh, didn't play well this uh, tournament at all. I'm a little tired. I don't like to never make excuses when I don't play good, but I uh, just didn't get it done. But uh, I've learned, and I'll be back. I did play well out in the Vegas uh, nine ball open. I finished yep. seventh, eighth. Nice. And uh, I lost Hill Hill to the to the young kid from uh, uh, from from Canada. Not John Moore, but the uh, the other young kid. The uh, I played a good safe on him, and he hit the ball, and, uh, slopped in the six, and ran out. And he ended up losing in the uh, finals to uh, I believe uh, Chip Compton, Oklahoma City kid. Oh yeah, Chip Compton's very good player, good one pocket player too. Buddy, his Joey Gray, they they've run around together. They're both solid young players. I think they're no older than 26 or 25 or so, 27, right around that age. Both from Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City. I think we got the payouts here. Let's see if we can find them. Yeah, I believe it's uh, somewhere around a thousand for first, and uh, like 450, 400, 500 or so for the first place in Calcutta. I which, just had the score. Which, uh, somebody stole it. Oh, you took the score? All right, which, uh, we'll get it here. Which, uh, you know, 1500 uh, or so roughly for a weekend's uh, pay is isn't, uh, isn't too us? bad of a pay. Okay. All right, payouts. 
You want to do it? Be my guest. Yeah, we got the payouts right here. We have uh, first place is 900, 500 for second, 300 for third, 400 for fourth, uh, 150 for fifth, sixth, and uh, total payout for seventh, eighth of the whole field, you know, 100. And then the Calcutta's uh, 400 for first, 250 for second, 200, 110. Total uh, was 1,070 in the purse. Minus, of course, the, you know, the tournament director's little cut. You yep. know, that always has to come off. He has to get something for uh, sure. holding a, a nice tournament like this. To, you know. Wow. Wow. He just jammed that ball to get on the hill. Looks like, again, uh, he's... He stood up out of the shot a little bit. Not as bad as the other one, but he did uh, he did move a little bit. And that's all it takes, an eighth of an inch off. Yeah, him. he's jumping up. We shoot him pretty good from the booth, though, don't we? we oh, don't we all do. I don't ever. miss anything from we'll the booth. Nothing. I got ball in hand position on everything, <laughs> I like to say. I always get the nuts. <laughs> Played that one a little scrappy, but wow. Yeah, he's going to try to pull things together here. Jeez. What do you do? Just uh, I play behind the nine? Yeah, play probably. Safe? Uh, cue ball behind the nine? Yeah, cue ball behind the nine. Thin off the uh, the seven, let it come back out a few inches, and uh, go to the back rail behind the nine. That's the he neglected right there. to bank it across the other end of the table. I didn't like that shot. Let's check out his position. I liked... Uh, Bank in the seven uh, away from the uh, cue ball. Yep. Right, no, a little, more, the, little bit more of a distance. I go for the side pocket bank here. Once again, I probably uh, I probably play this ball safe. Huh? Yeah, safety. Yeah. But what do we know sometimes? Yeah. No, you're right. He tried to make it, though. The attempt that was there, he tried to make the ball, I believe. And he left him a super tough shot. I mean, yeah, this, this is no this easy is, shot. This is no pushover shot here. Matt is very capable of pocketing this ball and getting perfect position. If he stays down and his mechanics are right. Nice shot. Bing, is he going to go? There's a he hole back him. there. He's he okay. Him. See if he gets off the rail. He has a little bit of an angle, well, but Matt's you know what? Slacking here because what? He's got a little bit of an angle. It looked like at first from the other angle he's a little straight in. He looks like he's back in this uh, this match now with Matt. We might have uh, a little match uh, in the making here if uh, Rick can uh, make a good break here and get out this rack. It makes it 7-5 and puts a little, uh, little bit of pressure on Matt now. I've seen it before. Let's see what happens. Hopefully a little bit later on uh, tonight or maybe even tomorrow, I'll get to, you know, sit down and do another match. Absolutely. I, you're the best one all day. I appreciate the compliment. No problem, man. I've enjoyed uh, hanging out with you so far. It's cool. I can see why Rob and Blair like you. They're good people. They got good taste, so. Yeah, I, uh, I uh, took right to them. and I got a friend of theirs is a friend of mine. I got to gotta be honest, I don't take to too many people too too quickly, too easy. And uh, Rob and Blair, uh, yep. we, we became uh, pretty tight. Yep. I've known Rob since about 2002 pretty well. Very good player. Seminole Pro Tour Player of the Year, I believe, what was it, two years ago? I'm not Three years ago? I'm not surprised. Yeah, he won, uh, I think he won... Uh, Three quarters of the events. I mean, uh, there was nice. four or five in a row. They don't uh, want to play him for money. Uh, he was trying to get a game at Capone's. And nobody wanted to play him Rob after is, the tournament. Rob's a Rob's a player that can hit an exceptional gear. Yeah, they don't want to play him. And you know, when that top pro is like, you know, Mike Davis don't want to play the guy for money. I mean. <laughs> No, 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 no. I mean, that's saying we were a pretty strong player. Just bobbled the ball. Look at this. See Look at goes. this. Look at see this. Oh. No, we'll see if Matt can capitalize here get to the hill. 
this is a ball that can uh, that can be missed as well if you take sure. it lightly. It looks like it has to be cut pretty thin. It's got to be reverse cut. And then he's got a lot of traffic at the back end of the table that could get in his way. You can reverse bank this. Huh? He rolled oh, it in there. It nice. Almost, it almost wanted to come out. Got I no chance. Maybe he does he, have a little a little window there. He may there. be able to play. It's a small window, he's if sure anything. He's sure killing like he is. No? Yeah, he don't have it. It's close. Yeah, I think he can only play it to the rail. There we nice. go. Nice shot. See what like kind of it's shape perfect he shape. Perfect yeah, shape. Did. Look at that. When it left the when it left the back rail, you could tell it had the right speed and everything on it. Mm -hmm. He hit that ball very well from that from that uh that angle. Is that how you spell your name? Fun time here at Top Hat Billiard Club, Q Club. Yes, Q Club. Nicest pool hall we have in the uh, area. Nice room, nice and clean. Yes, nice people, nice equipment. Like we said before, it's a nice establishment. Very nice owner, Fat Low. Once again, we appreciate you letting us have it here. Yep. This ball. Uh... Ouch. It looked like it had a little bit on it. I thought he might end up getting good on it, but uh, he's probably going to play a safe put him on the nine. Yep. Good shot. Rick needs to make a good hit here and hope for the best. This is it's the type of shot where you just got to hit it firm and try to get a roll. I mean... Somebody that can play this ball and call the shot and, and hit it clean and make it like that is <laughs> a little lucky and, and an exceptional player at the same time. It's no, Look no at this. Gimme. Nice Look hit. At this. Oh, Ouch. that was unfortunate. And it's going to give another game away. He needed, yes, he needed to uh, needed to have a roll there. Matt capitalizes here, puts him on the hill. It's worlds of pressure on uh, Rick Glasscock. Sure is. It seemed like. Uh, as Matt got to the back end of the set, he uh, he str started struggling a yeah, little bit he is. again. Yeah, I've seen that before from Matt. It looked like in the middle of the set he was starting to take complete control, right. and then he fell apart, and uh, Rick really couldn't uh, couldn't capitalize. But Matt's about to get on the hill here. Sh shouldn't anything happen? See how he hit the eight ball weak. Um, you can tell he's playing a little tight now to get to the hill. That wasn't much of a, a shot to have to get on a nine. It was pretty simple, and he wound up short. Good shot. Macra eight fours on the hill, racking the wind. Bada set. bing. Bada boom. Bada boom. See if he can break and run out. Break and run out for the nuts, man. Let's do it. I just talked to Blair a couple days ago. Tell me about some. He's stuff. got a he's got a good mind. He's very uh, cool guy. Very ingenious the way he thinks of things. I call him Big Bl Brother Blair. Uh huh. He's got about ten numbers. <laughs> I got his new one. You got his new one? Yeah, it's that's it right there. It's uh -huh. been switched like three times in the last five six months. <laughs> Rob Saez new. <laughs> Rob's gets Rob Saez gets more new phone numbers than uh. Than, than anybody you've ever seen. The man moves well, even on his phone numbers. He changes up. You can <laughs> never keep track of him, like a Houdini. This nice little shot here. 
Round and around we go. Yeah, he hit that ball pretty good. Um, oh, came up short. Um, That's what I call a, a, a good, bad shot. 50-yard line almost. <laughs> he, it looks like he can uh, back cut this ball, though. He might even be trying to play safe here. Yeah, I he's think he's trying to safe. make this ball. Wow, what a bad shot to play. But look at this. He's going to clip. He gave him the shot. He gave him the game. This should be... All he's got to uh, do is get... Get on the, if he gets on the, the five, the set the should be over. Yeah. The, the six is the only trouble ball, but the eight's right there to help him. Yeah. He just needs to make this ball. He's got to get on the right side of the five. And it looks like he's going to wind he up gonna pretty, get, uh, he's gonna get where pretty he needs good. To be. This could be it. Of course, he'd like to be a little bit better, but that's, that's not too bad from where he was at. He may play this ball all the way down and come off the side rail. Yep. Look at this. Nice and smooth. Beauty. Perfect shot. Beauty. Now, I don't think he's going to play the 6 8. He's probably just going to carry him off the inside of the 6. Yeah, that's a, a little great tough shot. shot. Break out there the 7. Uh -oh. See how he gets. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Look at this. It's the nuts, though. Look. He's, he's got a shot. Yeah. He's got a shot. It's, uh, it's not a dead end combo, it's got a little bit of an angle. I'm going to go out on the limb here. I don't, don't want to jinx anybody, but uh, I have a feeling he's going to make this ball. Now he's going to oh, go ahead play safe. safe. Why not? Now he gave him a dead ringer. See, that's what I'm talking about being conservative. That's the mat that I'm used to seeing. A lot of people, I would have, uh, I'm an aggressive player sometimes, especially if I'm feeling comfortable. Yeah. And I may have tried to, uh, since I'm on the hill there and he needs the last four games, I may have tried to... Uh, to get out from there. It looks like he froze him straight in the hole here. Yeah, he's got a clean clean shot on the ball. He'd he like actually to, froze him up to where it made the nuts. You know? He'd like to have been a little bit better after he made that shot, though. But He's tough on the six, though. This, this, he'll pop it in the side the way it looks. He may play this ball all the way down just because it's a bigger pocket. He that might. way he can put more English on the cue ball to get where he needs to be on the nine. It's tough to judge where that sucker's going to land, though. He's going to pop this with a little bit of inside left. Mm, I don't like this. Oh, no, he's neglecting to play safe. He's played a... The way he was lining up on that, it looked like he was going to play it down I to really the corner and try too. to punch the cue ball and, and juice it a little bit to come off the side rail and come back behind the nine. But this is a tough shot here. He played a pretty, pretty decent safe. It's on the back rail. It's a tough shot. Matt's got to be able to make this shot. And he does. Nice. And it's perfect speed, and it looks like it's going to bounce. And, uh, He's going to get the roll. He's going to get it. He's uh, going to get it. Well. No, he didn't get it. He's got a bank. But, hey, come on, man. This is I it. I think he's going to cut this he ball. He can cut it? Yeah, okay. he might have enough angle to where he can cut it. Oh, no, he went ahead and banked it. And you know what? There's the game set and match. Well, Rob Metz, I really appreciate you joining me. And uh, definitely stop back anytime you want. Maybe we can get you on that ring game tonight. And no so. problem. I'd like to play. All right, awesome. Thanks, people, awesome, for having man. me. Hope you enjoyed the match. And I'll uh, see you next time. All right, everybody, stick around. We'll have the next match up soon. Good job, good job. There you go.